Hey y'all, how you doing? I hope you're having a good day. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about time-dependent perturbation theory. So, I want to present it in a way I wish was presented to me with each and every step expi explicitly written out. Because if you don't see each and every step explicitly written out, well then you feel like they're kind of just making stuff up and they're skipping something or doing some math magical uh, trickery or something. So I'm not going to do any math magics here. I'm going to do legitimate mathematics and we will see what time dependent perturbation theory lets us do. So what we're going to start with is by knowing the time dependent Schrodinger equation. So we write IH bar DDT of psi, capital psi, which depends on position and time, equals the Hamiltonian times capital psi, again, depends on our position in space and on time. And now perturbation theory says we can write our Hamiltonian as a sum of an unperturbative Hamiltonian plus a perturbative part. So here we, we write our total Hamiltonian is equal to a time independent part, which I'll call H superscript zero, plus a time, plus a perturbative part, which depends on time, which I will call H superscript one. And we know from quantum mechanics, we can write any general state as a linear combination of stationary states. So here I wrote our general state, capital Psi, as a linear combination of some coefficients and I separate my um, exponential decay part from my coefficient. Sometimes you'll see this term written as just one coefficient where it's implied this e to the negative i e, n, e sub n t over h bar is uh, within the coefficient. And little psi of x is the stationary state. This should have an n on it. To make the math simpler so I don't have to write as much, I'm going to write e n over h bar as equal to omega n. So I can rewrite psi like this. Okay, so we got our general state and we got our perturbing Hamiltonian. Now we plug both of these into the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Okay, so what I did there was I just plugged in for capital Psi and I plugged in for H into this equation up here. Okay, and now we're going to expand it a little bit. We're going to take the time derivative of this thing in square brackets and I'm going to distribute the Hamiltonians. Okay, so what I did there was take, I used my chain rule to take the time derivative. Um, so the dot above the C means the time derivative of C. And then I also took the derivative of the exponential part. So I just brought out the negative I omega N. Okay, and now what we're going to do is distribute this IH bar, and I'm going to rewrite this omega n with the E as E over H bar. Okay. 
Okay, so on this side, I distributed the IH bar, and as we can see, the H bars are going to cancel, and you can rewrite negative I as 1 over I, so the I's are going to cancel. And on the other side here, I put the H's inside of the sum, because you can distribute these into a sum, and right here we got H0 psi, and I can rewrite that as E sub N of psi N X. And let's compare this term with this term here, and we see they're the exact same. So I subtract this one from this side and subtract this, and then they cancel. So we can rewrite our equation now like this. Okay, so now things are looking a little bit simpler. Now, if I forget to write the sub n, just, I'm sorry, just know that there's a sub n on these sides. Now we're going to switch to Dirac notation, so I'm going to put these psi sub n's, these stationary states, in a ket. That's all I'm going to do. So what I did was I put the psi sub n in a ket, and I also just didn't write the x. You just know that it depends on space, or that it's just a stationary state doesn't depend on time. Now here's the key thing, and this is done a lot in quantum mechanics. We're going to take the inner product with psi sub m, so a different stationary state. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation here by the bra of psi sub m. Okay, so let me write that here. Okay, and now bring all our constants out front of this bra part. Okay, so what I did there was I brought the bra of the psi sub m inside here, and I also brought the bra of psi sub m in here. Now, I can't bring it past the operator because that's not allowed in quantum mechanics. Okay, so we see that right here we got the Kronecker delta of m sub n. So the only term that's going to survive in these whole sums, no matter how many n's we got, is going to be when m equals n. So we can rewrite this side like this. So effectively all I did there was just rewrite this as 1. Because if m is not equal to n then it's 0 and we're just not going to see those. And now for the right side I'm going to rewrite this matrix element as H of sub M N. Okay? And I might drop that superscript, but we just remember it's there. So that's all I did there. Um, I'm not skipping too many steps. Okay, so I'm going to take this equation and rewrite it on the next page just so we have it at the top to reference. Okay, so now we, well, we have noticed that we've made no approximation so far, and this is exact. Now we're going to make our first approximation where we assume that our system only has two states, A and B. So I'm going to rewrite these equations um, with A and B, like such.
Okay, so what I did was I, for n, I plugged in a, and that's where I got this term. And in the second term, I plugged in b for n. So that's why we have it c sub b, and then this n over here was turned into a b, and the m's I called a. Now we're going to solve for our, well, we can get another equation um, for the der time derivative of c sub b, but I'm going to solve for um, the time derivative of c sub a, and then I'll just rewrite everything um, with b, and it'll, it would turn out the same. Okay, so in that step, all I did was solve for the derivative of c sub a. And now, I can just rewrite this and turn all my a's into b's, and all my b's into a's, and that will give us the time derivative of c sub b. Oh, we see by our rules of exponents that this term is going to go to 1. And this term we're going to write as e i omega a minus omega b t. And I'm going to call omega a minus omega b, I'm going to call that omega a b. Okay, so I just rewrote this equation, um, simplifying the exponentials, and I changed all my a's to b's. So, this is a real uh, important part. Now, we have solved for our two-state system, um, for our coefficients, and we just do some differential equations to actually get our coefficients. So this is the result we were working towards. Now what we're going to do is make an approximation where we say all our molecules start out in state A and there's no molecules in state B. Or in other words, we're going to call C sub A the zeroth approximation of C sub A. At t equals 0, we're going to call that 1. Because if you take the square modulus of c sub a, um, and, well, if you get 1, that means all your molecules are in state a, which is the approximation we're making. And no molecules are in state b. So, in other words, the only state populated at time zero this is before we turn on our perturbation is state A. Now we bring in the perturbation theory part of things and that says that we can write our first order perturbation of our C's in terms of our zeroth order approximations. So we write C, our C1's in terms of our C0's like such.
Okay, so what I did there was I plugged in the zeroth order approximation for CA up here, and that was just, we said it was 1, so that's how I got here. Now for C sub B, the time derivative, we said C sub B, the zeroth order approximation, was 0. So that means this first term was 0, so I didn't write that down. But then the C sub A, the zeroth order 1, was 1. So I didn't write it down like I did here, but it's just 1 anyways. And I noticed something that I should write omega B A here, because up here I did not switch the B's and the A's, so I'm going to do that quick. This is omega B A. Okay. Now we just integrate both sides with respect to dt to find our coefficients, like so. And finally, we get to the result that we have our coefficients as a function of time. So now we have our coefficients as a function of time. And once we know our perturbation, h, which is going to depend on time, then we can find the probability that we're in state A or state B. I mean, we can find the probability now, but we can't perform this integral because we don't know our perturbation. So in a later video, I'm going to do a sinusoidal or oscillatory perturbation, like an electric wave, um, and we're going to plug in for this h and be able to solve the integral and actually get the probability of being in state A or state B. But that's all for now, so I hope uh, you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching. Have a good day.